Hello everyone and welcome to Star Ocean The Divine Force or Star Ocean 6 if you really like numbers. Oh, I've been looking forward to this one for quite some time. It is finally here. Uh, before we begin what will hopefully be a full playthrough, I must thank Square Enix for sponsoring this video. I, they sent me a copy of the game. I'm so thrilled. I'm so honored and uh, I just can't quite believe it. So uh, yeah, if you're not aware, Star Ocean the Divine Force is the sixth entry in the Star Ocean series. And, um, yeah, oh, by the way, in the description of the video, there will be links, there will be all sorts of information. If you are interested in, uh, in getting this game, I recommend trying the demo. Uh, there is a free demo out available. I played that, really, really impressed me. I think this game has a lot of potential. Whether or not that actually comes to fruition, we will see. But, um, but yeah, Star Ocean, if you're not aware, is a, uh, a long-running JRPG series, action RPG, heavy sci-fi elements, magic. The best way I can describe it is like an anime Star Trek, if you will. Really just such a cool mixture. I think it's quite unique as well in the JRPG uh, space. <laughs> space, get it? But um, <laughs> yeah, let's jump into this, shall we? I, I can't wait. I really, really have been so very much looking forward to this and also really really nervous i hope it's good but the demo was really promising so uh yeah let's let's start a new game now one thing the demo didn't let us do was choose our character now th this is something they did in star ocean 2 uh to great effect we're gonna have multiple uh perspectives depending on who we pick now i played as raymond in the demo I know what his intro is like, I've seen it before, so just for sake of variety and um, curiosity, I'm going to start as uh, the lovely young lady here, who I actually forget her name. Uh, now, the demo was actually quite easy as well, so I've been tempted to start it on a higher difficulty, and uh, as you can see, three different uh, difficulty settings. I, I always go with normal, which is Galaxy in this one. Uh, but I, I am tempted to... I, I, we'll see. We'll see if the game is harder than it was in the demo. I'm, I'm going to assume it's not. Maybe the, just the beginning of the game is quite easy. But uh, we're going to go on Galaxy. And can I just say, I really like it when games have custom names for the difficulty settings. Ever since I was a kid playing Doom, I've always liked it when games did this. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be going on Galaxy. And um, I'm going to assume that the vast majority of this video is going to be gameplay that I've already played. So it's going to be tutorial stuff. I'm going to try my best to really showcase this game. And uh, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be interested enough to check it out yourselves or maybe subscribe and see the rest of the playthrough. Who knows? I don't know how this is going to go. I'm very nervous. I don't do, I don't do these sponsored videos very often. Let's just jump in. I've... I've yammered on enough. English is my uh, voice language of choice, just because I, I speak English and I don't speak Japanese. So, here we go. Understand my daughter sought your counsel, and you refused to entertain her flights of fancy, correct? It is no mere fancy, my lord. She does this for the sake of the people. We do not doubt her good intentions. It is the method with which we take issue. Highness. Good intentions. <laughs> Highness. My daughter, she is young and foolhardy, and will need your support. Highness. I heard you, Albert. What is it? Are you unwell? No, I am quite all right, thank you. Is that a shooting star? It must be. Right? But it was so low. Come. Highness! I, 
I can already tell I'm going to really enjoy the game's uh, soundtrack. Oh yes, Star Ocean the Divine Force. That is actually a really short intro compared to Raymond's. That was really short. Oh wow, yeah, we've got control so soon. Okay, Raymond has quite an extensive uh, number of cutscenes. Right, um, so... Yeah, um... You are falling behind. Oh. Forgive me. Letitia, that's the name. What in the world was that? We must investigate at once. Is it Letitia or Leticia? I, c I can't remember actually how you say her name. She reminds me of a paladin from Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, we've got our companion here with a very large sword. But yes, this is, uh... This is the opening of the game, so probably going to be a lot of tutorial stuff. Again, stuff that I've probably already played through in the demo, but this is the full game, so uh, it's very exciting. Let's follow our uh, Marcus here. At this hour. Please, I beg you. Perhaps we should get a closer look. You should not approach unidentified objects. Calm yourself. We can conceal ourselves in those shadows. <laughs> I can already tell that she's, uh, you know, she's very headstrong, and this guy's just like, oh, uh, p p please, w are you sure about this? Ugh. Right, looks like we're gonna hide behind these rocks. Let us hide. My word, what is it? Nothing I have ever laid eyes on. I shall take a closer no, look. No, you mustn't. Stay back where it is safe. <sighs> but it cannot be. So it was a vehicle. One that traverses the sky, no less. But how? Could it be the Empire? I... Uh, is that...? The Fiend of the Wield. It has found him. There's a big frog. He is unarmed! Your sword, Elbaird! Quickly! Highness, we know not his... <sighs> you there! Take this! Whoa! Whoa! Lady! You've a death wish. Two arms! No idea what's going on, but not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Alright, let's rumble! Okay, into first combat. And again, we're gonna have a lot of tutorials here. Powers. Okay, so one thing I, w I must point out, that was really cool seeing that intro from her perspective. Like, seeing her reaction to him arriving. That's really cool. I imagine there's gonna be a lot of replayability. Depend, you know, to experience the story from both sides. That is, that is really, really nifty. Right, uh, enemy encounter. So we've got different attacks. Circle, square, triangle. You need AP to uh, use your skills. And AP recovers over time. And cancel the final motion at the end of a skill by pressing a different button. That will activate the next skill immediately and let you take your next action quickly without any delay. So, yeah, very, very standard stuff. For an action RPG combat system. I'm going to flank this thing. And oh yeah, it is, it's going down pretty darn easily. And I've run out of AP already. There we go. Thanks for that. Don't know what I would have done if you silence. Who are you? <laughs> Sheesh. And if I tell you, you'll let me go, right? Let you go? After witnessing you exiting a foreign ship? <laughs> You're more fool than you look. Wait. Uh, you two know that's a ship? Let me guess. You're the assholes who shot us down, aren't you? Incoming. Long-range subspace transmission from Antonio Lawrence. Huh? Raymond! It's me, Antonio. Can you hear me? Ray, come in! I knew you weren't alone. <clears throat> Show yourself! Huh? Who in the hell are you? This isn't Raymond Lawrence! 
Step into the light. Hey, asshole. Harm a single hair on my brother, and your planet scorched Earth, you hear me? Raymond, where are you? How is this possible? This voice? I see no one. <laughs> uh, big ask, I know, but mind if I answer him real quick? After that, I swear, I'm all yours. Very well. Princess. If he truly had armed fighters waiting, we would be slain several times over by now. Go on. Do not keep your comrade waiting, Sir Raymond Lawrence. Oh, why, thank you, milady. <laughs> and uh, as for your butler or whatever, mind telling him to back it up? How dare you? As you wish. We shall give you the space you ask in good faith. In exchange, you will tell us who you are and the nature of your talking airship. Awesome. Okay. Sounds like we got a deal. Feds don't know, can't hurt them. Antonio? It's me, Raymond. Oh, Ray! Are you okay? Yeah, define okay. Had a run-in with the Federation, and it didn't end too well for the Yidus. What the hell? Emergency landing on some planet called Aster 4. Locals are real friendly. And listening right now. Are you shitting me? Chloe's down here somewhere, too. But I lost track of her pod on entry. And big question mark on the rest. Look, you've got to get here, man. We need you. Sir Raymond, Antonio... Hey, that voice. That one of Aster's friendly locals. I can guarantee Raymond's safety while he is stranded in this land. On one condition. You answer my question. Are you aligned with the Vale Empire? The who? Yeah, uh, don't even know him. Vile dissembler! Al Baird. Your comrades. Have you any idea of their whereabouts? Well, at the moment, not a clue. A girl named Chloe was riding one of these when she crashed way that away. And this ship, is it possible for anyone to pilot it? Yeah. I mean... That's kind of the point of them. That said, mine's run out of juice, so it's not going anywhere for the time being. So, if we provide it with more of this juice, theoretically, would we be able to pilot it? <laughs> Aren't you a curious one? Huh? <laughs> Can it be? Hey, speak of the devil. Madness. Oh, magnificent. Computer, get me a read on that craft. Was it from the Yidis? Who's on it? Readings indicate the pod was also ejected from the Yidis. No passenger signal detected. Is there a town or something in that direction? Um, not a town, no. Only the Madoom ruins. Albert, you must see this. Uh, Highness. Thanks for the info. Oh, and, uh, gonna hang on to this for a while Hold. longer. Sorry, buddy, but no can do. Hold there. We will accompany you. The ruins can be a treacherous place. And two friendly locals could assist. Oh, for the love of... Ah, fair point. Thank you. You may call me Leticia. And this gentleman here is Albert. Stand down, Albert. We are here to help him. Is that clear? As you wish. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Antonio. We'll catch up later, all right? Wish us luck. Uh, roger that. Stay safe down there. Oh, you guys. I'll explain the ins and outs of all this junk once I know my crew's safe. So, we got a deal? Yes, we do. Shall we then, Raymond? Uh, uh, wait. No more full name stuff. Just Ray is good. <laughs> all right. Uh, Ray? Awesome. Okay, let's move. Awesome. All right, we've met, uh, we've met Ray. It's, it's always funny. We've, we've got Le Leticia, or Leticia. Albert and then Ray. This is great. We received a special item. 
Ah, now this is probably stuff I've got with this version of the game, the uh, deluxe edition. No idea what any of this stuff is. I'm not really going to mess with it in this video, but uh, maybe later on in the playthrough. Uh, oh, and the game has just in finished it, uh, finished installing. Perfect. So, um, yeah, there's there's a lot to take in there. There's a lot we've missed on Ray's side of the story there, like his whole how he ended up here, his comrades, things like that. But for now, we're just going to focus on yeah playing this as as Leticia. Uh, we don't know anything about Ray. We d we don't know where he's come from. We are obviously on a on a planet that is quite uh, underdeveloped in the grand scheme of things. There's no spaceships or anything. And that's one thing I've always enjoyed about the, the series is the uh, the fish out of water kind of thing, you know, like, uh, it's just it's just really cool seeing people's reactions to this fancy technology. And uh, the music is really, really intense for not much happening right now. So um, we can, as far as I'm aware, swap between characters, which is awesome really really quickly on the d-pad um i'm probably gonna play mostly as ray because i like i like big freaking swords okay don't don't judge me i really like that but you can swap between them at any point in battle follow my lead which is really really cool okay we are in a place called the La, La case or lacasse wield and we've got to go find ray's uh compatriots companions crew Approaching the Madoom ruins. If we follow the pillars to the west, it should come into view. Can you tell our direction by reading the stars? Ah, don't worry. I got this. Hmm? Oh, very well. Shall we then? We shall. So, uh, yeah, the game's going to explain a bunch of mechanics as we go through. Uh, but visually, just just gotta say, it looks really nice. I, I, I don't really have many issues with the way the game looks. I mean, Ray's character model is a little bit weird to me. He does look straight out of Bon Jovi. But, um, yeah, I can't wait to see what kind of environments the game has, because uh, this first opening area is is quite pretty. And we've got some freaking space mushrooms. Mystic Raves. Correct. Let us continue along this path. So, uh, we can dodge. We can use L1 to dodge attacks. We can roll away and quickly put distance between you and the enemy. Okie dokie. Uh, since you are invincible, able to avoid attacks at the start, you can dodge to close the gap while... Ah, okay, so iframes, basically. Does not consume AP. AP recovery stops while evading, so you can't just spam evade constantly. Okay. So, yeah, pretty much. Um, dodge like this. Click the right stick in. Lock onto an enemy. And as you can see, you're... Uh, your companions will fight according to the AI, and they are very adept, it seems, at killing stuff before I get a chance. Which is why I'm thinking maybe I'll play on a higher difficulty at some point, just to see how that, uh, how the balancing feels. But it is the beginning of the game, so it probably is supposed to be quite easy. And uh, what a nice uh, grass here. Oh, and we've got a shiny. It's been a while since I've swung a sword around, but I guess I still got it. Got some blueberries. Pissed at me tomorrow. Your muscles are blooming humongous, Raymond. I, I don't care if the if I had muscles, I wouldn't care if they were pissed at me if they were that big. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, we've got um, switching between characters explained here. If the active play character becomes incapacitated, you can switch characters to continue fighting or revive that ally. Keep battling to adjust. Uh, keep battling by adjusting to the situation at hand. Okay. So yeah, you can quickly swap to anyone in the party. I'm gonna have to watch my AP though. You do run out of it very quickly. Uh, blueberries, by the way, are healing items. Now we do have the main menu here. Uh, we might as well go into quickly. Party, you can sort your characters, check the stats, uh, change equipment, level up, and uh, stuff like that. This is explaining some pretty simple stuff, HP, but Guts now causes evade status effects. Or cause evade status effects. Okay, element resistance, reducing magic damage. And you can sw swap the order of your party members. Yeah, pretty, pretty simple stuff. So let's, um, let's check our equipment. Uh, 
quite a few options here. We've got pretty much a weapon, armor, and two accessory slots. Uh, we've got some ring mail equipped right now. And looks like I have some special armor, which is... Oh, that is way better. Yeah, I'm not going to use that. That is probably going to make the game ridiculously easy so far. But, yeah, I mean, we could, we could technically equip it if we wanted to. Uh, I think... But no, we're just gonna we're gonna stick with uh, the ring mail for now. Do I have any accessories? Oh yeah, they gave me a bunch of accessories. Oh, the little bunnies, awesome. Uh, but no, let's let's just have a look at our weapon. She dual wields little swords. It seems a pair of swords, both graceful and practical. They are standard issue. Very nice. Uh, and chain combos. Now this is where you kind of decide what skills you use in battle and, and how you activate them. Uh, it's it's actually, I, I think it's looking like a pretty fun system. All you need to really worry about is whether or not you're holding a button or pressing it and depending on how many times you press it in succession you'll activate different skills down the, uh, down the chain. So it looks like you're going to have a lot of choice. You can have access to many, many skills with just a few presses of the button, which is uh, is very fun. And we get a nice little uh, preview of each skill as well. And each skill has its own power, AP cost, all sorts of information there on the right. So really, really excited to experiment with this and learn all sorts of skills. Uh, and in fact, you can even allocate items to these slots as well. So if you want to always heal with an item when you press square, you can do. I'm probably not going to do that. For the most part, items I'm just going to leave to using with the menu, but that is obviously an option. Uh, but right now, we don't have that many skills, so I'm going to leave that as the default. Uh, we have our items here. Yep, blueberries, they heal HP. Uh, quickly check you guys as well. But for now, I'm not going to really mess with the chain combos or equipment. Passive skills, I don't think we have any at the moment. Uh, I don't know what these passive skills are going to entail, what bonuses are going to give us. But um, check and strengthen skills. We can spend SP to level and strengthen abilities. We obtain SP by leveling up and from items. So, for example, we could, uh, we could, you know, make the double circle slash stronger if we had 40 SP, but we don't right now, we have nothing. So that's fine. And, uh, there's, there's really, look, it looks like pretty in-depth skill trees as well. So, uh, we could learn new skills here. And, uh, we spend SP to do this as well, so let's have a look. Uh, for Albert, for example, we can... Oh, get some auto healing. HP recovers during battle at regular intervals. That, my, I mean, I'm surprised we learned that so soon. I mean, it's not much, 1.5% HP, but uh, if we get more of those, that's only going to get better. And, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and things like attack up and new skills. So it looks like there's going to be a lot to learn, a lot of cool options for playstyles, and I just really can't wait to start learning these. Um, Raymond, we'll quickly have a check with you as, as well, but it's pretty much the same stuff, but everyone's got different skill trees. Really can't wait. Uh, is that going to be a passive skill, do you think? The orange ones might be passive skills. Uh, just different resistances, things like that. Okay. Right, and uh, I don't think we have much else here. We have collection. So, story. I, lo I love it when games give you story recaps, because so many times in the past I've played RPGs. You know, they're very long games, and if you take a break from them, you can forget what's happened, so I do appreciate that. And I remember playing Star Ocean 3. Star Ocean 3 is actually my favorite in the series. It was the first one I did play, and it had a really cool encyclopedia system where it explains... All of the world building, terms, lore, the, the Star Ocean is full of lore. Honestly, if you like that kind of thing, you can really dive into this. And uh, I'm not going to be reading it in the playthrough, but just bear in mind it is available if you want to just get a little bit of uh, 
extra info. Okay, right, let's continue. Uh, sprint button and uh full of monsters at night, huh? Guess I'm lucky to have met some people out here. Even if they are a little eccentric. <laughs> we got some honeybees. Prep for engagement. Ready yourself. And yep, yeah, explaining targeting, so lock on with R3. And swap with left and right on the D-pad. Again, very standard stuff. This this is not uh, unique at all to this game, but it works. I just have to remember that L1 is the dodge button. That's uh, usually I'm, I'm used to like circle or X. Oh, are we gained a level. Nice. Uh, level up and improving skills. Yep, I've pretty much just explained that. It's very very standard. Right, do I not have a skill? Hang on, do I not have a skill on hold? Yeah, I don't have anything uh, assigned to hold square, so let's just get uh, ne Nemesis Rhapsody. We'll put that on there as well. So if I hold square now, that should activate it. Which it does, but um, we obviously don't need to do that, really. We just press square. We're gaining uh, the currency of the Star Ocean series, Fall. Uh, which is a, quite a unique name for currency. I just think this game, I think, I, I do. I think the visuals look pretty nice. I'd be interested to hear your, your thoughts on it, chaps, but I, I really do quite like the way this game looks. I think it's a massive improvement over five anyway. And we have our first campfire. Let's not turn down a chance for rest. Let's have a nice kip. The music is really intense, isn't it, for, for this? Um, I, I think that that's that's been a common thing with many of the Star Ocean games I've played. Like maybe the music doesn't seem to fit the the situation, but it is good music. Highness, we cannot trust this man. Perhaps, yet he intrigues me. Intrigues you? And another thing. I asked you specifically to not refer to me as Highness. Curses. <sighs> he knows? If not already, then he soon will. It is important we remain on the best of terms with him. If we fail, then we will need him on our side. Hmm. You got some plans for him, have you? Eh? Yeah, I wonder what the story's going to be like. I really do, because Star Ocean has had some pretty crazy plots uh, in, in previous games. Trust me when I say that. Like, you have no idea. They they are not afraid to go really whew, outside of the box. Those stairs, they lead to the entrance of the ruins. Got it. Let's go. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be pretty much making our way to the first boss fight. Now, I'm going to avoid... I'm not going to fight all these creatures. I'm going to try and get to a certain point in the game when it unlocks uh, some some new mechanics, shall we say. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get to that in this video. Hopefully I will, but... Um, yeah, it's... These stairs look a little dangerous. Even if we did try to climb them, they'd probably give way. Yeah. Perhaps we should go around. The west side looks scalable, does it not? Yeah, we're gonna. We're, the, the thing I'm just talking about, the thing I was just about to talk about, is something that will help us get around a lot easier. And it seems like one of the biggest uh, things they're pushing with this game is just massive environments and being able to explore them really thoroughly uh, once we get more traversal options, shall we say. And uh, look at all these glowies. We can also destroy things like these pillars for items and stuff. Uh, picking up scrap iron, iron. Now, there probably, there is going to be a crafting system in this game. I'm sure there is. There's crafting in other Star Oceans and I can't wait to delve into that as well. I love, I love me a good crafting system. Hopefully, as much as I love Star Ocean 3, hopefully it's better than that though. Star Ocean 3's was not, it's not great. 
We got a chest. Aqua berries. Now, I believe they cure... I think they cure poison? Pretty sure they cure poison. We've also got some mixed berries as well. Uh, but yeah, aqua berries... Uh, closely resembles... Cure oh, they cure all status ailments. Very nice. Right, so yeah, we're, we, we can jump, obviously. I've shown that off. Not going to worry too much about exploring at the moment. But trust me, we will. And it, it won't be too long. Once we get done with, like, the first boss fight... I don't think I was supposed to jump down there, was I? Once we get done with the first boss fight, that's going to be pretty much... Uh, it's going to be a first-time playthrough from here on in. Or from there on in, I should say. Um, can I... Ah, here we go. Visibility is poor in such darkness. Trey, mind your footing. Yeah, let's, uh... In fact, let's show off Albert. He's got some pretty cool weapons. Spinny disc things. And again, uh, you, do, you do need to watch your AP, but it does obviously regen. If you give it a little bit of time. Nice one, Ray. Whoa. Raymond gained a level. Find some freaking corpses here. So we're actually taking a little bit of a battering. I like uh, I like Albert's outfit. I like the uh, clo clothing physics. Leave it to me. But I think we'll we'll control Ray control Ray for a little bit. Have some killer moves. Used to fight monsters too, by the way. Is that how it is for everyone who lives here? Yes. Well, more or less. Uh, whoa. <laughs> but it, it, from the very little I've seen of these characters, I do like their uh, their interactions. Uh, Ray and uh, uh, Let Leticia, uh, especially, really think I'm going to grow to uh, become quite attached to them. But it is obviously very early days yet. Right, I think we've just about made it to the ruins. So, this is Medum, huh? It's friggin' massive. Ancient and powerful Osirian Semiomancers once called these hallowed halls home. As written in the old texts. Okay, didn't get all of that, but I'll save the Q&A for later. <laughs> for now, let's focus on getting in and getting out. Yeah, I'm very, uh, very excited to learn about this planet, and obviously there's some sort of, uh, you know... <laughs> Thing, is something going on with her kingdom and some sort of empire or something. I, it's, and I feel like Ray's going to get caught in the middle of it. We got some thieving scumbags it. here. Well Ooh, oh, I love that ability. That's a really good one. All right, I like that. If we press square three times, that's the last hit of the combo as well, which just it just fits. And I think you are going to have a lot of freedom in in how you build your combos, how you design them. Right. I can see why they're called ruins. It doesn't even look like we can get through. Oh, it is it this place received visitors. Traversal here will undoubtedly be treacherous. Good thing I've got you two here to show me the way. Though we are familiar with the area, this is our first time actually being here. Ooh, oh, good finish. Carefully. Right, now one thing we haven't uh, had explained to us yet is stop mode, which, um, ah, there we go. Freeze time with stop mode by pressing the touchpad. You can take your aim, uh, take your time to use items, change up your strategy, and select targets. Yeah, so this is one thing I really, really appreciate. Um, when an action RPG has quite a... It, the, the combat is very fast and, and frenetic, for the most part. Uh, especially once we gain some new uh, abilities very soon. The, the, you'll be zipping around all over the place. But the the ability to just be like, you know what, I need to just calm everything down. Let's just take stock, what's going on, and, uh, you know, use uh, items and just see what targets. Just just pretty much get a breather, and Final Fantasy VII Remake did this too. And I just love that. I love it when action RPGs let you just pause the action whenever you want. This is a so I'm so glad they implemented this. Really, really good. Right. 
Yeah, now, I'm not sure how long this, this video is going to be, by the way, so... Folks here don't seem too friendly. We might not make it to this Before boss. The kingdom became as we know it now, this was the heart of civilization in the western part of the continent. It is said that much of the culture and knowledge that served as the foundation of our kingdom was created in this very place. So the riffraff left behind by the changing times wind up here, left the fence itself. A few more levels there. And yeah, we're getting some exposition as we fight, so whenever that's happening, I'll probably just shut my gob. And uh, yeah, just being able to swap your characters whenever you want is so cool. And then just pause the action, see what target you want to uh, focus on. It's just ah, really, really good. Well, that's over with. Trust this to me. Oh, we got another chest. Sweet. Oh, we got a guarding ring. Right, so an accessory that I'm actually going to equip. Uh, let's see if Ray wants it. Yeah, guard, guarding ring, so pretty much increases our defense by four. Not too shabby. And since we have actually gained some levels, we got some SP now, we might as well check out some skills. Uh, let's get some attack up for Ray. I love that jingle. I'm so glad that's the same from the other games. And uh, yeah, we don't have any other... SP to spend. Actually, we got 51. Let's, um, let's strengthen that Boulder Crush ability that I like. Oh, we need 60 for that. Okay, well, let's, let's upgrade Bell Ringer then. It's going to get that to level 2, and we'll, it's going to be like 3 more points to its attack, which isn't much, but that's going to add up over time. There we go, and uh, I think I'll worry about everyone else's in a little bit. We should be fine for now. But yeah, just the environments seem absolutely massive. In fact, can we get a map screen? Yes, we can. As you can see, pretty big, pretty big zones. Uh, this is probably one of the smaller ones, uh, actually. But yeah, there's going to be a lot to see and do. We are incapable of traversing such a chasm. Come. Let us circumvent it by moving through the ruins properly. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> Get back here! I must hit you with my giant sword. Which, isn't it really convenient that uh, Albert was carrying a massive sword on his back when he doesn't use it at all? I, I don't know, maybe it's just a spare in case he comes across any uh, crash-landed... Uh, Aliens, which we are an alien. Let's not beat around the bush. We, to them, we are an alien. So, uh, yeah, I, I do. I just, I just think Star Ocean is, is just a, a really cool mix of sci-fi and medieval, more primitive, you know, RPGs. Right. Head up to the top. Us. Yeah, looking very nice looking birdies. And we got a battle chain, which has given us extra money and XP, which I think is because I'm fighting them in quick succession, perhaps? I think that's how that works. Don't quote me on it, though. But yeah, we've taken a little bit of damage, but we're not struggling. Not at all. Even scumbags. Ha, you missed me. And we're gaining more levels. I have no AP. Uh, so, yeah, we can open up our items here. Minor Earth Glaive. So, that is pretty much a spell. Earth Glaive is a. Uh, spell in this series. Let's give that a go. Ooh, that was cool. Very nice. Let's maybe save that for uh, bigger groups of enemies. Ooh, Ray. That was brutal. Detecting. Escape pod signal above current position. 
No passenger signal identified. Where did that voice come from? Who goes there? Show yourself. <laughs> we already know it is not the enemy, Albert. Be at ease. Just calm Let down, us dude. Let's concentrate on the very real enemies before us, shall we? Uh, yes. Very well then. I mean, you've got to think about it, right? Exquisite. Can you imagine? If, if if we you know put put yourself in in Leticia and Albert's shoes like seeing all that crazy technology for the first time must be absolutely mental. It'd be like going back to the 1800s with a smartphone and be like, hey, I'm just gonna you know use the Wi-Fi or whatever. Although there wouldn't actually be Wi-Fi with it. But anyway, you know what I mean. People would absolutely freak out. I wish I could time travel. That'd be so cool. We have entered the ruins. Right. Let's Here we going. go. Please, please, please be okay. You gotta be kidding me. What is it? Elena, why? Ray. Why'd I have to play the hero? Why couldn't I just get in the damn escape pod? <laughs> Some captain I am. Ray! Duma production model 004213 activating. Confirmed. Life forms in need of protection. What? Warning. Warning. Hostile entities identified. Engaging defensive mode. Highness, are you all right? I believe so. Whoa. What, what is this? Later. Right now, we've got company. Interesting. So... When I played the demo as Raymond, the thing uh, sort of took to Raymond instead. Oh, okay. So yeah, Duma. Now this is what's going to make combat a lot quicker and um, a little bit overwhelming at first. You can hold R1 to raise a barrier around you, which uh, neutralizes all en enemy damage. Any close range attacks will be repelled, causing the enemy to flinch. So it's pretty much like a, a guard. Um, VA or Vanguard Assault. This action lets you make a high speed rush attack. When you press R1, your character begins to float while the barrier is up. Release the button to make your charge. You can uh, change directions while charging, uh, which also lets you avoid attacks. And this causes, yeah, this lets you blindside an enemy. So when you change direction during a VA rush, the enemy loses sight of you. The enemy will be immobilized and suffer extra damage for a time. So it's, uh, yeah, th there's, there's going to be a lot to take into account in these fights. I, I don't know how much of it's going to be really necessary, but it really is going to help you, you know, fight more efficiently if you master these systems. So, uh, blindsiding and VA gauge. Uh, a blindside that incapacitates the enemy lasts for an amount of time based on the VA gauge's level. Uh, the exclamation question mark symbols over the enemy's head tell you the remaining time. When they disappear, watch out! After changing directions during a VA attack, you will consume the VA gauge fully, or only use 50% if you perform a blindside. Right. Hitting enemies with attacks increases the VA gauge. Okay, so... Yeah. it's There's a lot of explanation here, and it, it is a little bit overwhelming. But once you get to grips with it, it's really not too bad. So our VA gauge at the moment is very, very low, which we can build up just by attacking stuff. 
There we go. And uh, if we press R1 now, we will shoot towards an enemy. And if you're really quick, you can use the left stick to change direction, and that can cause a blind side. Uh, also, if I hold R1, we have that uh, barrier around us, and then boom, we there we go, we did a blind side. Really, really cool. Really, really fun. I'm probably not going to do it very effectively very often, because I suck. But it is, uh, yeah, it, it, they've had similar things in previous Star Ocean games. But all the explanations for it is it's a little bit intimidating. And there we go, we won. These guys have some sort of automaton that they can pilot. Oh my god. Say hello to the first boss. Right, enemies with multiple target areas. Some enemies have multiple areas you can target. Torso, tail, head, etc. Uh, depending on the area that you attack, you might deal much more damage than striking the body. So, you have to think about it sometimes. Let's try and hit the head, shall we? Which is possible with Duma. Oh my god, did you see how much damage we just did? Oh yeah. Kicking out some serious damage then. I've run out of my AP. Whoa. So my plan is to just let my VA gauge build up a little bit as my allies attack it. I'm staying well away from that. Um, ooh, actually, just looking at uh, Albert's and Raymond's health. Maybe I should use... Maybe I should use an item. Let's give him a heal. There we go. Okay, it's nearly dead. Oh, gosh. Fire in the flames. Camera does get a little bit crazy sometimes. One more big hit there. Oh, we blindsided it, and we win. Beats me. Your guess is as good as mine. I thought it was yours. More like in my care than actually mine. Duma, is that correct? We know you have the faculty of speech. We heard you. Oh, feeling shy, are we? Oh. <laughs> Ray, might this be some new form of semiomancy? There's that word again. Is it like your version of symbology or something? Symbology? Uh, never mind. Uh, anyway, thanks you two. I really appreciate it. Oh, and while I'm at it, here. And what will you do once we part? Well, try and figure out where my friends are, for one. Uh, these lands are vast. What will you do for lodging, for food, for survival? What if your companions are across the sea? Would you swim? To that end, Ray, I have a proposition for you. Assist us in our journey, and we shall assist you in yours. Are you sure that's smart? Only thing you know about me is my name. And we ought rectify that at once, for learning more about the other is sure to benefit us both. Highness? Albert, should Raymond agree, he will be in our care. Whatever comes of this, I shall bear the consequences. Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Leticia Asarius, Crown Princess of Asarius. And this is Albert Bergholm, my royal retainer. Oh, shoot. I thought he was kidding when he called you Highness. <laughs> you think us liars? Uh, put yourself in my shoes. Doubt you'd be saying anything differently. <laughs> Indeed. Not over far from these ruins is the village of Larset. There, we shall find a quiet moment to talk. I, uh, might have to hold on to this for a while. Please do. Consider it a symbol of the trust we have placed in you. 
Good. I mean, it's a nice sword. I'll take it. Right. Uh, morning already. First trophy. Well, this is a fine mess we found ourselves in. Think of this as something new, something extraordinary. Right. Well, chaps, that is where I'm going to end this uh, first video. I may have had to have split this in two, actually. I'm not sure. Um, but really, thank you so much for checking this out. We're just going to get a quick tutorial on Duma here, which I'll probably go into uh, next time. And then we'll head to the uh, the village they just mentioned. And I just can't wait. I can't wait to play more of this. Oh, it's so it's been really, really fun so far. Definitely on the easy side, but like I said, it's the beginning of the game. We'll see how this plays out. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this, chaps. Please subscribe if you want to continue watching this playthrough. Uh, I'm going to do my best to get videos out of this as often as I can. And again, big thank you to Square for sponsoring this. I just... I feel so honored. I can't believe it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I consider myself just a... Uh, a schlub, you know? So, anyway. Um, and again, please check the description for all information on the game. Uh, check out the demo if you haven't already. And and if, if this looks like something you want to play yourself, uh, it is it is on sale now. So, thank you again for, for checking this out, everyone. I will see you in part two very soon. And, uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.